It was beautiful summer. The wheat fields were golden, the oats were green, and down among the meadows, the hay was stacked. Around the field and meadowlands rose vast forests and distant mountains in which deep lakes lay hidden. In the midst of all this, a duck sat on her nest, hatching her duckling. Egg sitting is a dull business, and hardly anyone came to see her. She was bored and fed up. At last, the eggshells began to crack, one after another. Suddenly, the nest exploded in a cacophony of peeps and tweets, said the mother duck, and lickety-split, they all waddled out to have a look around. How wide the world is, said the young ducks. Do you think this is the whole world? Their mother asked. White extends on and on, clear across to the other side of the garden, right on into the parson's field. Though that is further than I have ever been. Right then, she said as she got up stiffly, off to the lake. But as she stood, she noticed that one egg was still unhatched. A large gray egg with little scratches on it. How much longer is this going to take? She groaned as she sat back down. I'm really rather tired of it all. <laughs> Hours passed, and at last the big egg did crack said the young one, and out he tumbled. Mother Duck looked him over critically. He was very big and very ugly. Mother Duck, her patience at an end, sighed in resignation. The next day, the weather was splendid, and off to the pond marched Mother Duck, family in tow. Go find some tasty eel heads. One duckling after another plunged into the warm, bright water. Soon, even the big, ugly gray one was swimming along. Called Mother Duck. Come with me. I'll lead you out into the world and introduce you to the duck yard. Mind that you bend your necks to that great old duck over there. She's the noblest of us all and has Spanish blood in her. That's why she's so fat. Shake yourselves off and don't turn your toes in. They did as told, but the other ducks in the yard looked on indignantly. Another brood? As if there aren't enough of us already. Look at him. He's so big and ugly. Let's get rid of him. One duck charged up and bit his neck. Leave him alone, cried Mother Duck. But before she could stop the assault, she sensed the great Condesa Duck approaching. Maria Madre de Dios bendito, not that big one there. It's a pity you can't hatch him again. That can't be managed, your ladyship, said Mother Duck. He took too long in the egg. It's not my fault. Well, the others are pretty enough. Make yourself at home. Miss Patitos. And if you should
should find a tasty eel head. You may bring it to me. Soon the ducklings felt right at home. But the poor, ugly duckling was nipped by the ducks, pecked by the chickens. Even the turkeys bit him. He was so ugly that he became the laughingstock of the entire barn, chased and teased mercilessly by everyone, even his own brothers and sisters. We wish the cat would catch you, but he probably doesn't want your ugly feathers on his paws. His mother wouldn't look at him. Duck snipped, hens pecked, and the turkeys bit. Heartbroken, he ran away over the fence and across the great marsh. He settled in a quiet copse, and there he lay all night long, crying himself to sleep with the sound of distant laughter. He woke to the morning sun and the loud voices of two wild ganders nearby. These fine mangooses walked and talked with the arrogance of youth. Say there, comrade, that's quite a look. Come with us. In the other marsh nearby, there's some fine geese, all nice young lady gooses who know how to quack and lay. You're so ugly that you'll completely turn their heads and shine a better light on us. Gunshots suddenly shattered the stillness of the marsh, and the two ganders dropped dead by his side, turning the water red with their blood. Shots exploded again, and flocks of geese rose up into the air and pen. Another valley crashed, echoing over the marsh as blue smoke rose from the trees drifting like a cloud over the water. The bird dogs came crashing through the swamp, driven to a frenzy by the scent of blood. He tried to hide, but at that very moment, a huge yellow dog crashed through the underbrush, his tongue lolling from his mouth. Paralyzed with fear, the duckling could smell the foul reek of the dog's breath. As their eyes met, the beast paused, but off he splashed without touching the duckling. In shock, he thought, I'm so ugly, even a dog won't have me. He waited hours before his heart slowed, and he dared to look around. Then away he fled across field and farm, fleeing for days and then weeks. Wherever he went, he sensed every creature mocked his ugliness. It was mournful autumn. There was a chill in the air. The leaves turned yellow, red, and brown. The heavens went clear, then darkened to cold and gray, while low clouds descended, heavy with snow and hail. One evening, as the sun was setting and he rested, exhausted, on the shore of an immense dark lake, three large, handsome birds appeared out of the reeds. The duckling had never seen creatures so exotic, so beautiful, dazzlingly white, with long, graceful necks and terrifying black eyes. Swans. They uttered an alien cry as they unfurled their magnificent wings and spun into the air, taking flight to warmer climes. Circling overhead, they climbed higher and higher. A strange feeling stirred in his breast as he watched. He swam circles in the water. He craned his neck to follow their course, and overcome with emotion, he uttered a cry so shrill and strange that he frightened himself.
when he could no longer see them, he dived down to the bottom of the black waters. When he surfaced, he felt puny and completely alone. It was remorseless winter. Seemingly overnight, it became so bitterly cold that the duckling had to swim to and fro in the water to keep it from freezing. Every night the hole in which he swam got smaller and smaller and smaller until one morning it froze so hard that the duckling had to paddle continuously to keep the encroaching ice from closing in. Finally, at the end of his energy, he could swim no more, and he gave himself to the ice and was frozen fast. It would be too sad to tell of all the hardships and wretchedness he had to endure during the cruel winter. The wind that sailed like knives over the frozen surface of the lake. The frantic plunging for scraps of food that flew by. And worst of all, the searing loneliness and despair. When the first green sprout poked through the snow and the warm sun shone once more, the duckling was just barely alive among the reeds of the marsh. The lark began to sing. It was ecstatic springtime. The world seemed intoxicated with floral scents, but the duckling could still feel winter's cold ache in his bones. Then, from the thicket before him emerged the same three swans, sliding from the tall reeds onto the smooth water of the marsh. The duckling recognized them and was overwhelmed with sadness and loneliness. He sensed their power and ferocity and decided to charge them to invite their violence and end it all. You'll peck me to bits because I'm so ugly, he thought. Better be killed by them now than endure their taunting tomorrow. So he flew into the water straight toward the swans at full speed. They saw him and reared up, wings outstretched. Kill me, he cried as he bowed his head down over the water to wait for death. his own image. No longer was it the reflection of a clumsy gray bird. He 
his neck was long and noble, his wings broad and powerful, his eyes black and fierce. He was a swan. The three swam around him, stroking him gently with their bills. The new one is the most handsome of all, they said, bowing their long necks in his honor. For the first time in his life, he felt he might belong. He thought about everything he had endured. Sky, the other swans following in his wake, and he cried out with full heart, I've never dreamed there could be such happiness. Mm -hmm. 